Hello, my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you the If I Could Keep One tag. So this tag was created by Andy over at Andy is Reading probably, um, but I was tagged by Chloe at Books and Psychology, so it's taken me a little bit of time to get this uploaded from when she tagged me, um, but I've just had so many video plans that I've literally just got around to it. So sorry Chloe that this is so late. It feels weird to say sorry Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. Um, but yeah, I finally got the answers to this tag for you. So this is about picking your favourite authors and picking one book to save from each author. So I went with five just so we weren't going to be here all day. And I actually struggled to choose who my favourite authors are apart from my absolute favourite. So shall I go from bottom to most favourite? That's the plan. So these aren't perfectly ordered, but this is the best guess I've got. So for my fifth favourite author, I've gone with Rachel Kane, author of the Morganville Vampires series. Um, so there are 16 books. There are 1 to 15, which is the main story. But I've decided to keep book number 16, which is Midnight Bites. I really do think this is book 16. I'm pretty sure. Um, and it is actually the only one I haven't read yet. So that sounds weird to why I'd want to keep this one. Um, but as I have heard that this book is a summary of the first 15 books, 15 books is a lot. And it would make no sense to me to keep one from like the middle. The first book isn't my favourite of the series. I do like book number six, but I've probably read that one the most. Um, and I am currently in my reread for the whole series. So this one does say, welcome back to Morganville. Bringing together everything Rachel Kane has written in short form about Morganville, this collection is carefully organised into a timeline so you can read from the earliest adventures, some of which belong to vampires, all the way through to Post Daylighters, the final novel in the series. Midnight Bites includes more than 50,000 words of brand new content alongside stories compiled from the author's website and anthologies. So is it actually a short story collection? I think it is. I haven't read this yet. But I've obviously, I've been told it sums up the whole series, so I would keep this one. Next, I've gone with a weird one. I've gone with Anna Todd, author of the After series. I have no shame. Um, so it is, I don't even remember all of them. It starts with After, After We Collided, After We Fell and After Ever Happy. And then Before, I don't know why I've counted like backwards, that's weird. Um, I have not read number five, which is before, um, because that is about Hardin's life before everything goes down. And I'm just not too interested in that. I do have it on my Kindle, so maybe I'll reach for it one day. Um, but the book I've gone to pick from that is After Ever Happy, which is book number four. Um, a weird choice. I think this book is like 800 pages long. It's definitely one of the biggest books I read last year. Um, I do have it on my Kindle, so that's why I am not holding it. And this book, I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. Like this series, if you have no idea, this is about Tessa, who is like the stereotypical good girl, and she falls for Hardin, the stereotypical bad boy, um, when she goes away to college. So it's all about their love story, pretty much. And some, I don't even know how to explain it, some stuff happens <laughs> where Hardin turns out not to be that nice. Um, but book number four, a lot has happened, a lot has changed since the start, and that is the one where I think, even though there are negative things that happen in the relationship, things get summed up and brought to conclusion very nicely. And I absolutely loved it. I read it on holiday. It was such a good time, so I would keep after ever happy. Um, next, authors number two and three are like literally tied, so I wasn't sure who to go with next, but I've gone with Bridget Kemmerer. Um, most people will know her for A Curse So Dark and Lonely, um, but she has many, many more books. The one that I've gone to keep is More Than We Can Tell, um, I was going to say by Bridget Kemmerer. So this is the sort of sequel to Letters to the Lost, but it's about different characters, so you do not need to read them in order. This is about Rev and Emma. Um, Rev is an adopted kid and he's st struggling with a lot of stuff from his past with foster homes and foster families and his current living situation. 
Emma really enjoys designing video games and her dad is a video game designer, but her mom does not believe that is an appropriate career path, basically. Um, and then Rev and Emma meet and become friends and a relationship forms. And this was just the cutest book that I've read so far by Rigid Camera. I planned to sit down and read about 100 pages and I'm pretty sure I read the whole thing in one sitting. It was such a good time and I would definitely recommend this one out of all her works. Obviously she does have more fantasy stuff like the Cursed Dark and Lonely series and then she has her contemporary side which are Letters to the Lost, this one, um, Call It What You Want, am I forgetting one? No, Call It What You Want and I know she has some older works which I have got on Amazon to buy but of the ones I've read this is my favourite. So number two we've got Cassandra Clare. I have not read all of Cassandra Clare's books. The stage I'm at now, I've read books one to five of The Mortal Instruments, and I've read the first two Infernal Devices. So the next on my radar to read is Clockwork Princess, which a lot of people have said is their favourite book of all of them. And I haven't read City of Heavenly Fire yet, which is another one that people say is amazing. And I've definitely not got on to the newer stuff. So I'm back in the old Cassandra Clare days. And the book I've decided to keep is City of Bones. Um, I absolutely love this. I could not tell you how many times I've read it. It would probably just be embarrassing. Um, this is one of the books I read. I'm pretty sure I read like around the time when it came out. Um, so it came out in 2007. I'm gonna say I must have read it like 2009, 2010. Um, when I wasn't really a big reader and it really, really drew me in to urban fantasy, I guess. Um, and it's just such a big staple of like my teenage reading. And it's definitely a comfort read. Like I always know I can go back and read City of Bones, um, which I have done. So which is why I've read City of Bones maybe five times and have never got onto City of Heavenly Fire. I have got plans to, it won't be too long, but it is just a bit of a bit of a commitment, some of these books. Like they're not, they're not tiny. Um, but yeah, I would keep City of Bones. And finally, my favourite author. If anyone watching these videos watches all of my videos and hasn't guessed this book and this author, then I may be slightly disappointed. But my favourite author is Jen Bennett. I absolutely love Jen Bennett. Um, she follows me on Twitter and it's like, something that genuinely makes me happy <laughs> and the book I have gone to keep my favorite book of hers is Alex Approximately and this should not be a surprise because me and Brittany made our book club Sisters Approximately literally based on this book and our love of Jen Bennett so weirdly this one I have only read once and I've tabbed and annotated it I had such an amazing time reading this book um this is about Bailey who has met a guy called Alex online and they talk about their love of films. Um, and then Bailey moves in with her dad who actually lives in the same time as Alex, but she doesn't want to tell him that yet. Like she doesn't feel ready to meet him. And she meets a guy called Porter through some work that she gets and he's a bit of an idiot, but she kind of likes him. This book was insanely good. I had such an amazing time with it everything Jen Bennett writes I will read. I've, there's only a couple things of hers I haven't read yet like I or I don't own yet um, and me and Brittany are making it like a future plan to buy all of her books and read them together. Um, this is the US copy which I asked Cole to buy me and bring me from America. Like I have to have the American editions of these books. I'm just so obsessed with Jen Bennett and yeah I, I can't say more. So those are the five books I would keep from my five favourite authors. Let me know if you agree, disagree with any of these, if you haven't read any of these yet, if you hated any of these, I just need to know your opinions. So thank you very much Chloe for tagging me in this. Um, I haven't picked people to tag. Hmm, um, okay, so I forgot about the tagging business. I don't know how, um, but I have decided on some people to tag. I'm tagging Emily over at Emily Kathleen Reads. I'm tagging Emily over at Novel Novels. And I'm tagging Connor from Connor's Library Corner. And I'm also going to tag Mel from a book fiend named Mel. I think that's everyone. Um, I haven't asked them in advance. So if this video goes up and they don't fancy doing it, then you don't have to. But should have asked first, really. I'm unprepared. So... Again, thanks Chloe for tagging me. 
hope you guys want to do it. Thank you for anyone watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.